Ready to start adding users to your Totoro Learn site? If you've got a lot of users to add or you're importing users from another system, you'll want to use HR Import. Before you can do this for the first time, there are a few things you'll need to set up. We'll start with opening the HR Import menu and choosing to Manage Elements. Here you can decide what you want to be able to upload. At the moment, we'll make sure User is enabled but you can also use HR import in just the same way to import organization and position structures. These will be automatically disabled in an out of the box site. Next I want to check the settings for this element. This is where I decide how the import will work. Firstly, decide on the source of your user data. Where is the information going to come from? You can choose to import from a CSV file or connect directly to a database from another system. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a CSV file. You'll need to know what data you want to import to complete the rest of this screen and how you want the import to behave. For example, you can decide whether blank fields in your import are ignored or should be used to overwrite existing data. You can also decide on how passwords are added or modified. For example, if users are allowed to change their own passwords, you might want to only import new users' passwords, rather than changing a password of an existing user who also appears in the import. In this field, you have two options relating to how job assignments are handled by the import. Users can have multiple job assignments, each with a unique ID number within that user account. When adding job assignments via HR import, you can either link this job information to the user's single job assignment or upload multiple job assignments at once by providing the ID number for each. Choose Link to the user's first job assignment to create a first job assignment or update any existing primary first job assignment. Choose Link to the user's job assignment ID number to create or update multiple job assignments via an existing ID number alone. At the bottom of the page, you can decide whether HR Import can create, update and or delete users. It's important to think this through carefully. If you delete a user, all associated data, including their grades and certifications, will be deleted and can't be recovered. That's the initial setup stages complete, so we'll save our changes, and now we're ready to focus on the source files we'll use for this import. First I need to tell HR Import where to look for the file I want to import. I do this via the General Settings page. This File Access field tells HR Import where to look and by default is set to Directory Check where it looks at a specific file directory. However, I want to upload a CSV manually today so I'll change this setting. Next, I'll go to Sources and then choose CSV to set up the way our CSV will work. If you are setting up an external database, you'd go here instead. In this screen, we're basically matching up the fields in our CSV with the fields in your system, telling Totara what to expect from the file and what to do with the information. To do this, you'll probably want to refer to the CSV file or database you're planning to upload. Here's a CSV file I've prepared with some users. Now I need to tell HR Import which fields in the user profile I want to populate with my CSV data. At the top here there are some mandatory fields that HR Import requires, like a unique username, first name and last name. All other fields below are optional, so you need to tell Totara which extra fields you want to import. You also need to tell HR Import the name of the column as it appears in the CSV file or database, which is done in the Field Mapping section. Be careful when doing this and try to map fields which are genuinely like for like, such as surname to last name, as the information you import will still be added to the original field title in Totara. So for example, you wouldn't want to map middle name to email address because the user's email address would then be populated in the middle name field in the user's profile. The fields you've selected and named in Totara should be exactly the same fields that exist in your import. 
Once they are, we're ready to upload our file. It's worth mentioning here that in the future, assuming you want all of your imports to behave the same way, you can just start here as your setup is already complete. Add your file, and then run HR import on that file. This screen is checking we've got everything set up correctly, and we can run the import because we have. If you hadn't, you'd see some warnings here that you'd need to investigate. And now our users have been added to Totara. If you have rules set up for enrolments using audiences, organisations and positions, all of that will happen automatically for all of the users you uploaded, based on the information you provided in your import. Remember that you can also follow the same steps to upload organisation and position structures using HR import.